But there's a lot of, lot of people who've, stu- who've been studying this flat earth thing on their own. It's the only way you can do it. You, you sort of get the books out, get the internet out, and you, you know, you sort of study it. You look at the ball. And a lot of people have had a big awakening, a big realization, a big change in their frequency. I mean, it, it is big. It's like space doesn't exist anymore. You know, the planets, this infinite universe, infinite space. Big stars, big suns, this has all been smashed up. Hello and welcome to Flat Earth vs. Round Earth. That last clip is from a flat earther named Wakey Wakey, which was re-uploaded from another YouTuber named Joshua Stargaze. Mark Knight of Wakey Wakey has a prominent voice in the flat earth community and has convincing videos about the subject. I recommend checking them out if you haven't already. First off, I want to say thank you. The responses to my first video were great. Thank you guys for being so awesome and nice and giving me plenty of research. As you can see, one of the user named Onived, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, gave me plenty of homework to do, which is awesome. Thank you. For now, I'll see how many I can get to in this video. So before moving forward, I would first like to address what Neil deGrasse Tyson said about the shape of the Earth. He stated that the Earth is more accurately referred to as an oblate spheroid, and it's also pear-shaped. So what does that mean? How much would it affect different calculations? According to Google, the circumference of Earth at the equator is about 24,902 miles, and the circumference on the meridian lines is 24,860 miles. That is a difference in circumference of only 0.0017%. If we look back at the scale model of Earth, we can see if there is any visual difference. The diameter I used for this model is 7,926 miles. Using the oblate spheroid calculations, the diameter of the equator would be 7,927 miles, and the diameter of the prime meridian would be 7,913 miles. So we need to add one mile to the x-axis, which is 1.76 pixels on this scale, and subtract 13 miles from the y-axis, which is 22.88 pixels on this scale. Visually, the change from a perfect circle is basically non-existent. When calling the Earth pear-shaped or doing curvature calculations, the difference from a perfect sphere is incredibly small. For example, if we calculate the curvature over 150 miles on the equator, then the drop would be 14,994 feet, and on the meridian line would be 15,020 feet. That's also a difference of only 0.0017%. So even though technically that is not nothing, we most likely will not need to be that exact in future calculations. I will, however, try to factor that in if a certain proof needs a very precise number. So a proof I forgot to cover in my first video is ships over the horizon. Ball earthers claim that a proof of the Earth's curvature is that ships disappear hull first over the horizon, and that's because it's being hidden by the curvature of the Earth. The rebuttal by flat earthers is that it only appears that way because of our perspective. Referring to zetetic astronomy, Robotham illustrates several examples of the lower part of objects disappearing before the higher portion. What I found to be the most interesting argument is flat earthers say that by using a good zoom camera, you can watch a ship appear to go over the horizon and then bring it right back into view by zooming in. They claim this can only be done if the earth is flat but I don't think that's technically 100% true. Depending on the elevation of the camera, it is definitely possible on the ball earth model for a ship to disappear to the naked eye and then reappear by zooming in with a camera. But I did happen to come up with an idea to potentially test both theories at once. If you or a friend has a boat and a nice zoom camera, then this should be pretty easy to do on a fairly calm sunny day. First, try to find a spot near the water where you can place the camera on a tripod at a very low elevation, like two to three feet. You can use a smartphone to mark your location and double check your elevation. Then have someone on the boat use a GPS or smartphone to track their location and start heading directly away from the camera. Have them head to a distance where the boat should be hidden by the curvature. For example, if the boat was at a height of six feet above the water and the camera was at an elevation of three feet, then the boat should not be visible at 6 miles if the earth was a ball. If you can see the boat with the camera at 6 miles, then that would be good evidence the earth is flat. But if you can't see the boat anymore, then raise the camera up by 4 feet or higher. If the boat starts to become visible when the camera is raised over 4 feet, 
that would be good evidence the Earth is a sphere. Let me know if you guys have any possible ways to test these theories. The next suggestion I received was to show the drop of the horizon line from high altitude balloon footage. In my last video, I showed the drop of the horizon from a plane, so would it be much different from the balloon footage? The first video I looked at was posted by Robert Orcutt and was taken from an HD camera at 120,000 feet. Because of the distortion of the camera, there is no point for me to analyze the curvature, but we can still analyze the drop of the horizon in relation to eye level. So I grabbed a screenshot from the video and opened it in Photoshop. Just like my last video, I placed a line at the horizon. At 120,000 feet, the horizon would be 425 miles away. In 425 miles, the Earth would drop 22.9 miles on the Sphere Earth model, which is about 0.05%. So calculating the pixels from the bottom of the image to the line, 0.05% would be about 25 pixels. So if the Earth was a sphere, then the horizon would be here on a flat plane. Once again, not as big as I thought it would be. Looking back at the video, as the camera angles up and down, the horizon goes well above and below the two lines, so this would be very difficult to use as proof of the horizon dropping or proof of it remaining at eye level. The other high altitude footage I looked at was the re-uploaded one posted by Wakey Wakey. It was an interesting video of a panoramic view using sound bites from different flat earthers. The footage was taken from a height of 18 miles, which is less than the previous clip at about 95,000 feet. This panoramic was also created from a distorted lens. In my last video, I did happen to show what the curvature should look like from 18 and a half miles if the Earth was a sphere, which turned out to be less than you'd think it would be from that high up. Using the same method as before, I took a screen cap and measured the pixels from the bottom to the horizon line. At 95,000 feet, the horizon would be 378 miles away. In 378 miles, the drop would be 18.06 miles, or about 0.048%. In this image, that would be about 13 pixels. So if the Earth was a sphere, then the horizon would be here, on a flat plane. Once again, this makes it very difficult to prove either theory. So some of you wanted me to analyze some specific examples referring to the Earth's curvature and line of sight. Going back to another question from the same user, they wanted me to analyze a video posted by Terry Robinson. In his video, he examines photos that he took from Oahu taken from Kauai about 90 miles away. In the video, he states the first picture is taken from Wailua River Overlook at about 200 to 300 feet. The island of Oahu has an elevation of about 4,000 feet. He also shows another picture of the island taken from the airport. He states that this elevation would be about 50 feet. I do wish he was more exact on where the pictures were taken, but I will still analyze the information he provides. First off, looking at an elevation map of Oahu, it appears that there are large sections that are above about 3,000 feet. This should give us an idea of how much of the island we should be seeing on the sphere model. The highest peak is at about 4,003 feet. Since we know that we have to at least be seeing the highest peak in the images, I'm going to use that location to measure distances. First, I would like to look at the image from the airport. So in Google Earth, I measured the distance from the airport to Oahu's highest peak to be about 84 miles. The area around the airport ranges from an elevation of 80 to 150 feet. I'll use 150 feet because I'm just testing if it would be possible to see on the Sphere Earth model. Using the calculator, if we input an eye level of 150 feet, 4,000 feet for the peak, and 84 miles for the distance, then the island would be visible. Over 800 feet should still be visible if the Earth was a ball. Looking at the other image, he states that it was taken from Wailua River Overlook. Unfortunately, I do not know much about the island and I couldn't seem to find the exact location of the overlook, so I just used areas around the Wailua River. This area is the Wailua River State Park with an elevation ranging from 200 to 400 feet and is about 88 miles from the peak. This area is the Wailua Homesteads with an elevation ranging from 300 to 500 feet and is about 89 miles from the peak. Going back to the calculator, if we use a distance of 89 miles and the peak height of 4,000 feet, we can look at the differences of eye level. At a 500 foot eye level, over 1,400 feet of the island would be visible. At a 400 foot eye level, over 1,200 feet would be visible. 300 foot eye level, over 900 feet would be visible, and finally, at an eye level of 200 feet, over 500 feet of the island would be visible. So I highly encourage him to retake the pictures and bring a GPS or smartphone to get the exact location of the picture, or use a camera or smartphone that has geotagging capabilities. 
Using that and the exact distance to the peak of Oahu, he could potentially have a strong case to prove his theory. Maybe even take pictures at different elevations to see how low it would still be visible. Overall, he did a great job. He just needs a little more specific information. So the last proof I want to analyze in this video was posted by a user named Jamal Williams. He asked me to critique the following image. In the image, we can see Isiola Delba to the island of Corsica, which is about 105 miles. If we are looking at a distance of 105 miles, then the Earth should curve down about 1,836 feet on either side of the central peak of the arc. If we can see 8,878 feet to the peak of Corsica, then shouldn't we be able to see the 1,800 foot drop, which is 21% of that? He also links some pictures from Zetetic Astronomy and states that we should see this to some degree. But instead, we see this. So, what should we be seeing on the Sphere Earth model? Going back to the scale model, 105 miles of curvature would look like this. Not much visible curvature at all, but maybe we can work with it. Looking back at the image provided, it is unfortunately low quality and very pixelated, but I'll still try to analyze it and work with what I have. First I cranked up the contrast to see the islands a little bit better, and then measured the height of Corsica. It's difficult to see and estimate, but I measured a height of about 20 pixels. There is no way of knowing if we're seeing the entire island from the base to the top, but I'll just assume that we are. Now I'll add a straight line and zoom in on the edge. It was difficult to match up the line to the horizon due to the low resolution, but I did the best I could. Looking over to the far left, it does appear to curve away from the line very slightly. 21% of 20 pixels is about 4 pixels. If I measure from the line to the drop, it appears to be about 2 to 3 pixels. So technically speaking, the image does seem to imply a slight curvature, but not much at all. Overall, it doesn't appear to be very convincing either way, but what do you guys think? I'm honestly not sure on this one. So at the end of round two, both fighters are standing their ground. Looking at the fight recap, one, although it is more accurate to say that the Earth is an oblate spheroid, it will be easier to do calculations using a perfect sphere, and it shouldn't affect the results by a substantial amount. Two, there seems to be good explanations for both models in respect to ships disappearing over the horizon, but some carefully planned tests could potentially prove one theory over the other. Three, looking at high altitude balloon footage, the drop in eye level is still pretty small and would be difficult to prove either theory. Four, if we estimate the information provided, it is possible for Oahu to be visible on the Sphere Earth model. And finally, the image showing a 105 mile stretch of water appears straight at first, but looking closer does appear to imply a slight amount of curvature, but that could easily be debatable. So thank you to everyone who commented, and sorry if I haven't gotten to your question yet, but I am trying to get through all of them. Again, please do not hesitate to comment and provide feedback. Let me know if I've made any mistakes, if there's something to add more detail on, specific topics to cover in the future, or just general questions and suggestions. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you for the next round.